皆さん、こんにちは。今日は、えっと、チューリヒの Google オフィスにお邪魔して、えっと、ダニエル・ファイズバーグに、グーフートレンダーについてインタビューしたいと思います。はい、ダニエル、Thank you for coming to us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. All right.、Uh, so, you recently shared a series of videos on YouTube、uh, explaining how to utilize Google Trends. I found them extremely helpful and insightful, and I highly recommend、uh, them to anyone who hasn't watched them yet. So, today I'd like to ask you some questions about Google Trends. Will I? Yes,、yeah. perfect. So, there are many keyword research tools available out there. What advantages does、uh, Google Trends、uh, offer compared to other tools? Yeah, so I think Google Trends has a very interesting、uh, angle is that, well, first of all, we have a、uh, It's a Google search、yeah. product.、Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of data. I think, first of all, the, the scale of the data is really amazing. So you have a, a big, big sample、mm-hmm. of what people are searching on, on, on Google search. And we can use that to show how, to, how trends, how patterns they're changing in how people search uh, uh, on Google. Also, in terms of freshness, we have a, an extremely fresh. Data set. So we look at the data from a few hours ago and we publish it constantly. So that's、uh, one of the things that I think is very special about, the, about trends. And, and also, like the way that you can, that people they ask their most intimate questions to Google. And I think that by showing that, you, you have a glimpse into how people think. So, so I think the, to your question about other、uh, keyword tools, I think. Trends has a, a special place because, well, it looks at a very、uh, unique data set and it really helps you understand what's trending, what are the patterns, what's growing, what's decreasing, and that can help you find topics that are relevant to your audience and, and publish content or original content, helpful content about, about those topics. So, Google Trends is、uh, superior in terms of、uh, the amount of data and、uh, freshness, right? Yes. And it also、yeah. is useful to、uh, identify the current trends. Right? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, next question is、uh, Are there any industry, industries where Google Trends is especially helpful and useful? Yeah, so, so we see a few examples. I think、uh, one of the really interesting examples is、uh, research companies and governments. So, governments do a lot of work in terms of、uh, understanding, for example,、uh, trends around the country, right? So, if you can see even If people, if there is a,、uh, an illness, for example,、uh, that is spreading. So you can see how people search for symptoms, like city after city, and it grows uh, uh, over time. So that's、uh, one very interesting、uh, subject. And universities, they use it a lot to understand、uh, research questions, right? On what's happening, how is this changing society? And so I think that's very interesting. Another field that we see a lot of people using is、uh, news companies.、Yes. So, for example, there is an election. You can use Google Trends to understand what people they are looking for in these elections or Olympic Games. So, they want to publish something, how people are reacting to, to the games and, and things like that. So, news, you see that a lot. And of course, in SEO, you see people using it to do keyword research and to understand trends on. On Google search in order to optimize their search efforts. How about e commerce? How can they uh, use uh, Google Trends in a good way? So, e commerce, one of the ways that I, I, I find that could be really interesting. So, if you imagine a, a supermarket, like a big supermarket that has like many stores、yeah. in different cities,、yeah. so you can understand, for example, in a city, let's say a brand of deodorant. Okay.、Mm-hmm. So, You can see that in different cities, people they search for different deodorant brands. So, you can help. So, by understanding the demand, by understanding what people are searching for, you can prepare your inventory in the source with the products that people are looking in specific cities. So, I think in terms of uh, predicting uh, uh, demand, I think、uh, it's very interesting for e commerce websites. So, analyzing、uh, trends according to the geography is also an advantage of、uh, yes. trends. Okay,、yeah. perfect. Next question is So, Google Trends are displays related topics and related queries when、uh, you enter keywords. They seem quite similar, but what are the difference, differences between them? Yeah, I, I, think, I think one of the, so for example, one of the, the use cases that I see for related queries, I've seen people、uh, doing that is you, you, know, you write about a, a specific topic that is important for your audience and you find out that. 
you know, people that search for this topic, they search for a similar topic, which sometimes even like, for example, you sell a specific uh, product and you see that people that search for this brand, they also search for this brand. So that can give you an insight into where could you expand to. So I think the related queries very often, if you look at them, they are, as you said, extremely similar to the query that you're looking at. But sometimes you'll see something that will, that can like be a, an Eureka moment that you understand suddenly that this topic or this similar uh, topic is, it could be a way for you to expand. So I think that would be a way to use them. So many times show uh, recovering trends or uh, seasonal trends. Yeah. So sometimes the reasons are easy to understand. For example, uh, searches for Christmas tree spike in late November mm -hmm. each, uh, each year because Christmas is uh, approaching. However, there are cases where the reasons aren't as obvious. How can we figure them out? Uh, by thinking very hard. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sometimes it's really hard to find the, the the, the relationship, right? And I think we spoke about related queries that, that could oh, be yeah. an option or something like reading, for example, you see a massive change on uh, something, let's say, related to a specific brand, right? On, on a specific... Uh, so you could, by doing research online and trying to find more about the... seeing when something changed for the last time and trying to find out why it's happening every year. So, for example, you see that a specific product spikes every year in June, for example, right? And you don't understand why. So you can go back and look at, for example, Google News for uh -huh. that specific month and see like what, what is happening during that month. Uh, and yeah, that's, I think it's a, uh, it's just, I think just research and thinking is kind of the... Uh, can we say that related queries or related topics are in the for the past period? Yes, so basically on, on, on the Explorer page of Google Trends, mm -hmm. you can set the, the, the time range mm -hmm. and then you'll see everything for a specific time range. Then uh, maybe we can see uh, what uh, causes the spike by uh, limiting the period mm -hmm. uh, where yeah. spike if it was happening. Be. Yeah, yeah, that okay. will be interesting. Okay. Next question, so this question is about uh, creating a content calendar. So how far in advance should I prepare seasonal content, considering the time that Google needs to discover, index, and evaluate the content? What would you recommend? Yeah, that's a tough question because it depends a lot. Yeah, exactly. And as you know, like some websites, Google will crawl very, yes. very fast. And some other websites, if you're a much smaller yes, site, yes. then you would probably need more time in advance so that Google has the opportunity to come to your website and see that you have new content. Uh, so that's a bit hard to, to answer because it really depends on the website and how fast, but you do have a, maybe a way <clears throat> for you to look. So if you go to Search Console, you can see for certain pages of your website, when was the last time that Google crawled your website. So we need to understand that, say, like kind of a baseline? I think the baseline, it's, it's hard to, to give a number. Uh -huh. Like about, uh, but I think by looking at how often, so you have the uh, another useful way to do it is looking at the crawl stats report. Uh -huh. So you can see how often Google comes to your website, and then you can try, you can understand better how long does it take for Google to crawl and index the website. Okay, okay. In one of your Google Trends tutorial videos, you shared a hidden feature of the tool. It can also be utilized to find popular keywords on YouTube. Yeah. I, I like that feature. Yeah. Could you explain this uh, often overlooked usage for those who might have missed the tip? Yeah. So I think one, uh, well, YouTube is a massive search engine. Yes, that's Lots that's of people that's that's popular search engine. I think so, yeah. I don't know the actual numbers, but I think uh, I've, I've heard that at some point. So YouTube is massive and there are people that their lives is, you know, creating content or video content. And I think, so I think it's really important. And, and also like when you're creating content for your website, I think it's interesting to have videos as well. I think you, you yeah. think so too. Yes, yes. So, and it's interesting to see that when you look at particular search terms and you look at, at their trends on Google search and on YouTube, they have very different, yes. very different. Uh, was amazed, uh, yeah. So, so I think when you're thinking about creating video content, which is a very hard thing to do, it takes a lot of time and you have to, I think it's very helpful for you to look at YouTube before. Don't assume that 
Google search is, is like the, the source of truth for YouTube too. So I think uh, that can be really helpful for you to expand your content and, and make sure that you're create, creating content that is uh, interesting for the YouTube audience of your site or your channel. Uh, YouTube was a must use to trends, right? <laughs> Right. So this is the last question. Finally, could you share some, uh, could you share some uh, practical advice on how to utilize Google Trends to its fullest potential? Yeah, it's. I, I really like uh, just going into Google Trends and, and checking things that are interesting to me. And I think that uh, as a business owner uh, or an SEO, I think just like constantly coming back and checking, like if the changes there are, uh, if the trends they are changing. I think that's a very useful thing to do, like just making sure that you're tracking, you're monitoring the topics that are important to you and seeing what's changing. So for example, one way to do that, let's say that you are in the fashion industry, okay? Let's say, and you search for something uh, related to fashion. So in, in Google Trends, one of the things that uh, I think is very interesting is that you can, you can look for a search term and you can look for a topic. A topic is a cluster of terms. So if you monitor, for example, the, the fashion topic constantly, you can see, for example, in the related queries, you can see what related queries inside the fashion topic they are trending or what they're changing or they're dropping or they're increasing. So I think that's a, a very good way to, to be on top of things and, and understand what's going on in your specific industry. Do you have any plan of uh, the second season of uh, YouTube tutorial videos on YouTube? <laughs> I do, but that's uh, that's all I'm gonna say. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm hoping that uh, we can create some more content, more advanced content yeah, when yeah. it comes to using Google Chat. I will look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. thank you for joining us today. It's really a uh, fantastic uh, chatting with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.